there was always going to be, always going to be, at some point, a, well, where Brexit would have unexpected consequences. And it has been, so far, some things you've seen, for example, in the microchip race. The microchip race was a perfect example, because in, shall we say, the post-industrial strategy that the that the you know our government came up in a post-Brexit landscape, it recognized that, you know, you know, these 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 microchips, these superconductors, kind of important resource to have. And maybe it's not a good idea for the entire world to rely on its resource, on this one very good resource of a highly technical nature, to it all to be coming from Taiwan. That is where most of them come from. That is where most of the, 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 the building of these things is done. Most of the world supply comes from there. But, but with the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, it was actually realized, well, hold on a second. What if China goes and takes Taiwan? What would happen to a very, very important, crucial, and even strategic resource that all of a sudden we would no longer have access to? And as a result, you have seen other countries around the world try to expand their microchip processing. We've seen America, uh, with Joe Biden, put a huge bill into, into process to try and get chip manufacturing in the US set up. We've seen the European Union do exactly the same. And then, of course, there was our attempt. <laughs> and we went through this attempt. As we said before, it was quite absolutely pathetic. The idea that you could just turn around and go, well, here you go, <laughs> you know? Um, we were offering nothing. We offer these 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 companies that were building sort of the microchips, the, the, the ones that are here, pretty much next to nothing, while they're all looking across the pond to America and going, wow, if we set up shop there, we'd have all these subsidies, we'd get access to all this money, we could have access to all these funds, and nothing. Like, the money that was spent, or at least meant to be spent, was so, again, it was an astronomical sum to someone like you or I, but when you're talking money in the billions, it's not really going to sort of wow these companies when in reality, you know, you say it's a vast sum of money, but in reality, it's only like a couple of thousand. And to them, to try and put that into research and development, to plan for the future, to try and grow, it works out really to nothing. And then you've got, of course, as we pointed out, the Japan example. Well, Japan spent in the exact same amount of money that we did, except the strategy was different. Instead of going, here's all the money spread out, which, again, an attempt to try and do what America and the EU did, but on a, well, a far less terror, on a far more terrible scale, um, because we did not put the amount of money that was needed to really supercharge uh, that industry. Again, so much for being a science superpower. Instead, what Japan did was, we're going to spend that exact same amount of money, except we are going to build a nationalized chip plant factory. All that money is going to go into building that one factory, because that can really help boost capacity for Japan, and that they will have that as a manufacturing plant, and then once that is built, once that is established, they can then start to expand on that factory even more. But it's not just microchips where Britain has been having its unexpected, of course, um, delays, shall we say, in, uh, in Brexit. It turns out now that we are now being massively hobbled in the space race. And this is predominantly because, surprise, surprise, Brexit. And we always said there were going to be unexpected consequences, but there you go. So before we get more uh, into this, uh, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee. And of course, as always, there is the uh, one-off donation link called um, the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there is the Pony Club down below as well. So. As always, um, 
let's you know thank you very much for all the uh, people who do help support the channel and on with this so where have we been losing out where has brexit really pulled those down well the first one and and what is the most obvious because it's not just happening in the space industry sector it is actually happening in a lot of the different sectors throughout the uk that they are now finding it really hard to recruit people why because we're no longer in the european union if you were a german scientist you could come along get a job in the uk no problem um you know you can nip nick nip back and cross um you know, to Germany for, for Christmas, etc., go back, see your family, and then come back to the UK to work, etc., etc. This is how it sort of worked. But of course, now we're out of that, now we're on in that, now things become even bigger, of course, for a problem. Recruitment is a big, big issue in this area because of the highly technical nature, and of course, the number of people who do space-related degrees isn't actually that high. Even in the UK, I think it's only um, 2,000 people a year actually pass with such a niche space-related degree. And most of those 2,000 people don't actually go to work in the UK space industry. They go to other countries, namely to America, but also now increasingly over to Europe. And that will bring it, be feeding in to another problem uh, that we will have, of course, be talking about later. But I want to go over quickly uh, to this Bloomberg article because they wrote a bit about this. And this is something that was mentioned a bit before about our over-reliance on the US GPS satellite network because Europe was building its own GPS satellite network because it didn't want to have to rely on GPS, which is very, very much controlled and dominated by the US. So they were putting millions, billions even, into building a brand new satellite network, which we had also contributed to as well through our membership of the EU. But now we're out of that, all that money that we actually spent, that we invested in that system, wasted. Because just like, again, for some reason, Boris Johnson and the rest of the Brexiteers did not want to be a part of that, even though this was, again, something the EU said, you still want to be part of this. And the answer came back, no, we can build our own system. That promise, as you can guess, went very much quickly by the wayside. <laughs> so, let's see what uh, this is talking about. So, after its uh, Brexit exclusion from EU systems, Britain is now critically dependent on the US-owned GPS navigation system. Andy Proctor, a former UK official and specialist positioning in navigation and timing, said that in a 2022 submission to Parliament, Proctor described the increasing risk given the electronic warfare systems being used in Europe today. British officials will now have to develop a crisis plan in case such services become unavailable and critical systems go offline. And State Commission research back in October showed that losing access to satellite navigation systems would cost the economy more than £1 billion a day. So think about that, what that's just said. There is increasingly more and more cyber and electronic warfare. This is becoming an ever-increasing part of war. We've seen this happen in between Ukraine and Russia. But between two, uh, shall we say, more equal technological powers, cyber warfare and electronic warfare would become an ever-increasing part of that you know, that warfare. So shutting down systems like your enemy's GPS usage or things like that would become a huge tactical advantage to you. The Russian system is absolutely terrible, to the point where we have seen pilots have mobile phones using the GPS system on that, because it's far more effective. So you can see the danger this might have, and not being, you know, linked to a European system. Again, we could have had access to something that we could have said, hey, we, we've we've paid into this, we, we've contributed to this, we still want to be part of this, and we are still willing to contribute to part of this, but 
Of course, no. Again, something maybe again that Labour could do. Say, hey, we want to be part of the of the of the this, this European system that you are sort of building for sort of navigation. We're too reliant on this. Let's do a deal. The other thing that a lot of satellite companies are still worried about as well, worth mentioning, is that Elon Musk with Starlink has poured billions into sort of building his own satellite network. And well, as we've seen in <laughs> in, in, in the case of Ukraine, he turned that system off so that they couldn't attack or perform, you know, critical attacks on Russian infrastructure because he didn't like that happening. And Elon Musk's coverage, uh, as we've seen in, well, as we've seen in Argentina, uh, you know, Millet handed all the, the Argentina's satellite access over to Elon Musk and Starlink and as well as the lithium mining rights. Very important if you are going to be, you know, sending a lot more satellites into space. Something a lot of people um, missed when that announcement came out. But yeah, uh, kind of important, you know, strategically as well. So that's something we are definitely giving up. But not only that, we're also talking about companies as well. What about these UK space companies? Because since 2010, like the UK sort of space industry has massively boomed because everyone could sort of see this. So they were sort of investing in this general direction. But now, once again, we've had a, a government that just refused to invest in this booming new industrial sector and just left it to its own. So it's had to very much survive by its own wiles. And now these companies are at a point where it's like, well, there's nothing really going on in the UK. We might as well move to Europe. We might as well move to America, and that will be a massive loss to our industry, our industrial capacity, our industrial building, and our ability just to be able to build stuff, which apparently was what Brexiteers wanted. So, I'm just going to read this next part as well because this also shows um, just how bad this is going could be as well. So, counter to the Brexit motto of "Take Back Control." Some UK champions are now being pulled into overseas conglomerates. In May, the California-based California Visat Inc. bought the UK's largest satellite operator, Insima. While it has com committed to keeping these operations in the UK for the next five years, Visat has lost over half its value since the deal was announced in 2021, and at least a quarter of it, it would cut over 10% of its workforce globally. So this was the big thing that we talked about during the referendum, that we would have these big companies that would go in, buy up pieces of UK companies, and then just close down the UK operation just, just to buy it, and then take all those assets, take all that stuff, and then move it out of the country. That is bad. And this happened not only... Um, under Boris, well, uh, under Boris Johnson's watch, but Rishi Sunak sort of let this deal go through as well. He was the treasurer at the time. And it's not too surprising that, of course, a California-based company where, of course, Rishi Sunak likes to, you know, go and sun himself, all of a sudden has bought a UK-based satellite company, one of our largest satellite operators, in fact. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a problem. French-backed... Um, Yieldstack Communications and SE also merged with OneWeb back in September. While uh, a deal to split ownership equally, the group is headquartered now in Paris, and France holds a bigger stake than the UK government. So just, just imagine that. Another big satellite company. The French government owns a bigger stake in it than the UK government. It just goes to show you how there has been no attention paid to any industrial strategy or anything in the UK. They just didn't care. British space manufacturing is already dominated by overseas uh, firms like airspace, uh, airspace giant Aerobus, with over 80% of the UK space agency spending is now pooled in the European Space Agency, a non-EU institution, a proportion of which hasn't changed since Brexit. Although the UK government spokesperson said that the country's long-term plan for the Euro European uh, Space Agency participation is under review, a month 
Uh, this month, Britain rejoins the EU satellite Earth observation program, Copernicus, after leaving due to Brexit. That was a part of um, Horizon, by the way. That's why we're now back in it. And of course, that's even more worrying that we're now trying to, you know, oh yes, um, a European space agency, well, now that's all under review. Again, we spent billions in helping to develop stuff. This helped massively with sort of UK space um, industry development, brought jobs here, tons of technical know-how. All that could go. Uh, Seraphim's, of course, chief investment officer, James Berger, has praised the UK's approach, such uh, as it is a uh, space strategy. But it warmed of the looming risk of falling behind without increased financial support to drive higher potential company growth. In an email statement, he said this, the, challenge, the great challenge is, is the race for global commercial space sector, the scale of operation, the scale of finance. And Freeman, the former space minister, said in an interview uh, in, uh, back in the October at the London Stock Exchange space event, saying you are global and integrated or you are nothing. Um, this is again super worrying that this is yet another sector that we have sort of given up on, and and generally it, it's kind of shocking because we this was, this was something we would actually been building upon, and since 2010, most of this from initial investment by you know Gordon Brown paving the way landed in 2010, and then. Cameron initially did continue on and commit to this funding. It was sort of slashed a bit by, you know, austerity, but this funding did continue on and eventually it was brought again, it brought to an end, but these companies were established. They could continue now sort of running under their own steam, uh, but they've reached a point where they've gone, we cannot grow any further without government support or investment. We have now hobbled ourselves because. Brexit has meant we are now out of the um, European uh, sort of GPS equivalent, even though we spent a lot of money trying to develop that. We have sold off two critical UK satellite operating governances, with one having the French government has a bigger share than the French government's. The recruitment to this industry is, of course, is very, very fierce. Um, and because of, of Brexit, that has now fallen out. Um, funding to the education to sort of train more people in this area also fallen pretty much off a cliff. And yet, remember, we are meant to be a science superpower. All this stuff, all this that their stuff, when they said that, when they promised this, that this is the direction we wanted to go in, this is what we wanted to do, not only have they failed on, on microchips, they failed when it comes to sort of space technology and building sort of satellites and, and sort of the coverage. Kind of important. Yeah, we're now paying the price for that. So something that is, again, highly important, and ultimately we have been massively hindered in this space race by Brexit. As I said, Brexit was always going to have unintended consequences, and unfortunately, this looks like it's going to be one, and there will be consequences in the future if we try and do things like this. So, anyway, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button, and of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page, the one of the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee, and of course, there is the YouTube thank you button and the Pony Club as well. So, as always, we'll see you all next time.